when you come to Ohio State, the first thing you do is you go to the freshman program. And all the engineers take the same freshman courses, and they're really good. In fact, I'm insanely jealous. I wish I'd had that when I was young. But no, we had rocks and bricks and stuff. But anyways, it's a very good uh, freshman program. And what they do is they, they have all these labs. And so each lab, one lab it might be electrical lab. The next lab might be a mechanical lab. The next lab might be chemical engineering lab. So during that freshman year, you have lots of time to explore all the different things you want to do and see what floats your boat. And then you'll come to your senses and come to electrical engineering. Once you get into electrical engineering, we just scrapped our entire sophomore program. We had these older courses that have been around a while. And we just threw those out and we took them and we made this new sophomore sequence that is so cool. Oh, it is very cool. So they have iPads in the lab and they have all these cool equipment very all brand new equipment I might say they got this special room that only sophomores can go in can I go in there no my card key won't open it sophomores can go in there and in addition to all the labs which is an open lab so they can go in anytime they want and work on their projects they also have a big screen TV so they can rewatch the lectures and they can chat with each other and on Friday nights they can watch movies and they have a popcorn machine in there I mean this is not right when I was young did I mention rocks and bricks so, so the sophomore program is really cool, and then once you get through that, then you've had sort of the basics, and then you start going out and taking all your technical electives. And we have like a bazillion technical electives. That's actually one of the advantages of coming to a big school like Ohio State, because we're so big, we have lots and lots of courses. You can take all kind of crazy stuff. You can take medical imaging, you can take the photonics lab, that's a good one. You can take lasers or fiber optics, you can take... Um, neural networks, uh, communications, all kinds of things, wireless, antennas, all kind of stuff. When I first came, I was nervous, like most people, about the size of the school. But it actually doesn't feel that big to me. Like, it, I'm actually surprised by how small it feels. Because really, all your classes are going to be in one part of campus. So you'll just walk around there, and you'll see the same people every day. Reading and uh, research are a really important part of my graduate work. So I've been so pleased with the professionalism and the support that I get from the university libraries. Uh, there's been maybe a handful of books or articles that I couldn't have uh, obtained through them that I had to go to an interlibrary loan to get. And, and related to research, I think one of the really cool things that I'd like to, uh, to shout out for is uh, the Ohio Supercomputer Center, which has some of the world's, famous, well, world's most famous engineers working on uh, creating a high-performance computing environment for researchers like me, as well as the Electro Science Lab to do the kind of, uh, uh, to do the kind of research that I want to accomplish. What I love about the EC uh, program is that it's very diverse and since we have a large school that means there's always a lot of classes being offered and a lot of different classes being offered all at the same time. So it really leads to letting you find out what you want to do. For instance, when I first enrolled I took all my core classes and I kind of figured out, hey I don't like to do power but I really love controls and communications and then I was able to do specifically what I wanted to do. I really like the EC program because all of the professors really care about the students and want to see you succeed and if you put the time in to go talk to them and introduce yourself then they will really help you out and you're not going to experience any of that you know you're just a number you have 200 people in your class all the classes are really small Well, I've always been interested uh, uh, since I was very young in technology and uh, various aspects. At the beginning, actually, my major interest in college was microelectronics and VLSI design. But then I discovered the beauty of uh, linear algebra and mathematics and decided to switch to systems theory, which was, in my opinion, the perfect marriage between uh, engineering and mathematics. I've been told if you want to save one person, become a doctor. If you want to save the world, become an engineer. Electrical was the specialization of engineering that appealed most to me. And I really like circuits and I like what electrical engineers do. Since I became an electrical engineer, I find this really fun because you get to invent stuff and you, you get to it, it, learn all these cool things and when tech, new technology happens, you're the first one to understand it or you could be the one to invent it. So it's lots of fun. I like going in the lab and building things and making things and inventing stuff. I 
they're really caring towards the students and want to see you succeed. Uh, they'll help you out however they can and uh, being one of those people that they see as active in the school, they're going to put extra attention into you. Everybody here, both my graduate student uh, uh, colleagues as well as the mentors, the postdocs and the advisors are uh, extremely knowledgeable as well as humble people and uh, they're very generous with their time and it's been absolutely great working with such a great group of people. So we're working on an automotive acceleration control system. And what this does is upon a transmission signal uh, signaled by a green light, a car will accelerate to a desired speed limit without any human input whatsoever. I work in radar signal processing and my goal is to create algorithms that will convert raw radar data from uh, say an aircraft with an antenna mounted on the side that's circling a city illuminating a large spot on the ground. And the goal is to convert that radar data into information about moving targets, uh, moving vehicles, moving uh, people to recognize who they are, classify them, and track them over time. And uh, this has a lot of application, obviously, in the military world, but also in c for civilian decision makers who have to know uh, exactly those sorts of information in cases like humanitarian disasters and things like that. I'm working with the Air Force Research Laboratories on several projects. One is the control of air-breathing hypersonic vehicles, which is the next uh, class of uh, space vehicles designed to replace the space shuttle for a different set of missions, and also on control and modeling of uh, insect-like micro-aerial vehicles, again in collaboration with the Air Force Research Laboratory in Dayton, Ohio. We use light to solve engineering problems, and one of the things that uh, we work on is using um, MEMS, which are microelectromechanical systems, they're chips, they're actually chips with little tiny moving parts on them that can operate mechanically like mirrors in my case. So when you apply electrostatic voltage, you can make the mirrors tip one way or the other. And then I bounce light beams back and forth between a bunch of mirrors like I have over here. And the idea is you bounce back and forth and every time they bounce they hit a MEMS mirror and then you tip the mirror one way or the other and you switch the beam and do marvelous things. One, one of the things that we work on is using these light beams to steer a phased array antenna. So if you don't know what a phased array antenna is, that's okay because we have classes you can take. But it's a big giant array of antennas and when you add them all up so that they're, all their beams, which are very wide individually, when they add them up they are very directional. So when you go to the airport and you see that antenna that's spinning around and around to scan the sky, you don't want to do that mechanically. You don't want to have to grease the bearings. So you want to do that electrically. So we take the electrical signals that are going to the antenna elements, each antenna element, and we put them on light beams and then we bounce the light beams back and forth to create time delays and then the time delays change when the light, when the um, RF signal comes out of the antennas, each antenna in the rain, and effectively steers the beam. So you can take that beam and steer it around the sky without having to move any parts. Oh, that's very cool. You really need to go to office hours. Everyone's going to tell you go to office hours and you're going to be like, no, I don't really need to go. But really the teachers like to see that you're putting the effort in and get involved in something, doesn't matter what. I mean, it can be something in engineering, because there's tons of projects that you can do, or something off campus, like barbecue club or something, but just really need to expand your horizons. How to prepare to be successful in ECE or in engineering in general, I would say, um, keep up with your math and science, and when you're studying for that final exam, study to remember it for life. Don't just study it to get through the exam. I wish I had done more of that, so there were a lot of things I had to go back and relearn that I should have known. I would have saved a lot of time and I would have been better if I would have learned all that stuff for real. I know students that spend, you know, 10 hours in the computer lab overdoing their homework. And I also know students who kind of slack off. Uh, you need to realize that college is really a time for you to further your career. It's also the best time of your life, so find that balance in between and have fun with it.